So, yeah, I'm a little late. Usually it's supposed to be seven, but we were up at uh, Fort Worth. I was over at Chucky's and uh, dealing with a bumper on my truck. So I got back as soon as I could and then got to sit down about eight and then a the pizza guy showed up and the front gate's like 350 yards away. So it takes a little while. So, 59 Fridays. Um, lipstick challenge, future projects, etc. I guess first thing about the lipstick challenge. One, I don't know how to figure out how much money I've accumulated on it. Um, one problem is YouTube deleted my last live stream. It's just gone. I didn't delete it. I pulled my phone out. I checked my you know, YouTube studio app. And I saw it just flash like that. And it said, no, video deleted. And I was like, what the heck? And I tried to find a video, video is gone. I've written YouTube about it. I'm in contact with them. They can't figure out what's um, no, what's going on. And, and just FYI, YouTube doesn't back up the videos. Once they're gone, they're gone. There's nothing to do about it. I can still figure out what the financials were that I made off of it and I can add. So like the Super Chat stuff, Whenever you do, whenever you guys donate like a dollar or let's say 10, uh, make it make it easier, uh, $10. If you do $10, Google takes 30 to uh, $3 that take 30%. So I can look up on the last live stream how much money I made and figure out what 70% of, you know, uh, that was, um, which I can do pretty quickly. But it's just a, man, it's a pain. I don't know why. There was nothing bad in the video, and they can't figure out anything either. So it's just kind of a, and it happens to a, a few YouTubers. It happened to Justin with Good of the Land. So the last Super Chat video that was on 323 was last Friday. I made $47.82. You round it to 50. So that means total, I think there was like $70 on that Super Chat, $74 or something like that. Um, now the other two videos are still up. I, I don't know, one of them was $12.60 and then one of them was $425.92. That's what Google pays me. You add, um, you know, $426 is 70% of what, that's 563 or something. So I don't really know where we stand. If you guys can go back through the old videos real quick and you can look up how much money was on each live stream and break it down for me, I appreciate it. The only one you're not gonna be able to find is the one where I made 47.82. Um, we can do some maths real quick and figure, I was planning on doing this before the live stream, but I had to go get the pizza, meet the pizza guy. So I think there's been um, three live streams. Um, one of them was, Let's see, 4782. One of them was twelve six twelve dollars and sixty cents. And the big one was four twenty-five ninety-two. Four twenty-five point ninety-two. So we get the calculator out. That's forty-seven dot eighty-two plus twelve sixty plus four twenty-five ninety-two. So that's four hundred and eighty-six dollars total. So four hundred and eighty-seven um, is seventy percent of what? How do you? I don't know. I suck at math. <laughs> so one of you guys do the math for me. There's four hundred and twenty-five dollars ninety-two cents. That's what the Google has paid me. That's seventy percent of the whole. Figure out what the the thirty that thirty percent that they took. So four hundred twenty-five dollars and there, four hundred twenty-six dollars and seventy percent. Then what is the grand total? If you can figure that out, I appreciate it. We'll see if everybody um, uh, pop out chat. We'll see if everybody gets the same answers for. All right. Um, ba, 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 ba. Cool. I gotta get my shut the door. I gave it to Ethan. It was on top of the other pizza. 
Yeah, you gotta eat the actual pizza before you eat the brownies, buddy. Okay. So I'm setting up my, my monitors and everything. What do you think of the German international tractors? I don't know much about them. First, Stephen, holy crap, that was a long time. Holy crap, that was a long time. Yeah. Um Z fell. It's still there. I don't think it is, man. I mean, maybe they put it back up since today. Um, now, the last live stream is not there. There was the one that was the lipstick challenge for charity, but there was a video on the 22nd. The video that's on the 22nd is not there. It's just gone. It's completely deleted. Nobody knows why. Um, Trump debt B for two dollars, forty-five nuts. Since I am blocked for making a comment on Chucky's YouTube channel, uh, to stick it to the man, I'll give you one dollar for every liked vote on your troll comment on this hydraulic remote video. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> if you guys don't uh, really know what he's talking about, that's forty-five nuts on Chucky's channel. There's a um, uh. Uh, he did a video about adding remotes to back of his Kubota. And so I got on there and like, I like to get on his and I troll, I leave troll comments. Most people realize it's me. Some people don't realize that it's me at all. And like, so they sit there and complain about it. <laughs> um, they're like, Oh my God, snowflake. I can't believe you. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, <laughs> and they get all butthurt about it. And it's glorious. So I'm going to actually keep track of this this time. So the $141 Canadian pesos. What is that in U.S. pesos? I says it's about the same, I know, but. Okay, so. Everybody said that so far we've had about $600. So um, $600. 45 nuts just gave 141. Good old Silas Marner, 20 bucks. Thank you, Silas. And so you guys that, uh, that don't real, don't know about the Super Chat and why people are throwing money up on it, I said in the last couple of uh, Super Chats, I'm sure all you guys know this, but there's my, probably, maybe somebody that hasn't hasn't heard it, doesn't know about it. On one of the Super Chats, uh, somebody asked about my tattoo in my right arm. So I showed him my tattoo, and I made a joke and said, if you want to see the one on the left arm, it's going to cost you money. Hell, for 100 bucks, I'll take my shirt off and show you the one on my back. And then I said, heck, for 1000 I'll put lipstick on. And then right after that, Tater Salad got on and put up like 300 400 bucks like that. He was like, I want to see it, you know, that lipstick. And I was like, oh, crap. So we started that $1,000 uh, I put on lipstick, and I started thinking about it the next day. And I was like, man, I just uh, – you know, I, don't get me wrong. Like, I have Patreon. I have Super Chat and everything. And I really appreciate Like, you guys that throw money up on there, and it's super appreciative. It does help the channel out. I don't make that much off the YouTube videos and stuff. So it does really help. But with the amount that, like, Tater Salad gave and everybody else that uh, uh, put up towards it, like, I, man, to me, just just putting the lipstick on for $1,000 is kind of cheesy. So I was like, man, I, what if I donated to charity? Well, I happen to be going to... Um, a demolition ranch meet and greet next month on the 14th and they're all the proceeds and everything from their whole meet and greet they, they sold tickets they're sold out now all the profit and the proceeds are all going to their charity so i figured while i was there i just hand them a check or cash or something and say hey man throw this on your charity appreciate it my my viewers you know uh, uh came up with a thousand dollars you know or whatever it is to for me to put on lipstick so um and we're we're pretty close. So we got six hundred. We're seven hundred and forty one. We're seven hundred and sixty one dollars. Seven sixty one towards the thousand dollar goal. <laughs> Justin told me he goes, man, just uh, just stop doing live streams and you don't have to do it. <laughs> we both laughed about it because we know when he suggested that we was just a joke. We he knew that I wouldn't do it. I know he was joking too. But um, let's see. Catch up on the comments here. Uh, Jeff Scott, good evening, sir. I haven't asked my dad where the serial number is located on John Deere B. Um, where the serial number plate is supposed to be on the tractor, it's missing, so we don't know. Um, best we could tell, one of the viewers said it was a 49, I believe, because he has one. Uh, let's see. 
right about six hundred dollars, six oh eight, Roadrunner, Carlton. That's funny. The Silas Marner super chat for twenty bucks. Um, I troll my buddy's channel all the time. Yeah, I do the same thing with um, um, Chucky's channel and Go to the Land, and and I don't ever say anything bad about it. I just I, I make up stuff like. If you guys don't know the one on, uh, we're talking about on Chucky's channel, um, I'll pull it up and show you exactly what I wrote. And this is the type of troll, you know, quote unquote trolling that I do. Um, let's pull it up here. There's 141 likes on that one. So let me minimize the chat, come over here, figure out. That's not what I want. Screen share. Uh, screen number one. Share. All right. So this is the this is what I wrote. Um, I said, "What a hack! Should have left a factory. Now you've altered the hydraulic system and changed demand load, so it's going to go into region more often and cause even further destruction of our environment. You obviously don't care about our environment or or our children. More exhausting air is going to melt the ice wall that holds the ocean back and will then drown us all." So <laughs> when I'm trolling, that's the kind of trolling I do. I don't do like what you know a lot of people's internet trolling is, which is like calling people names, making fun of stuff. And there's a bunch of replies on there. Most people got it. A couple of people didn't. They didn't they didn't understand it was a joke. They didn't think it was funny or anything. <laughs> uh, let me get my pop out chat back. Um work that dollar from Princess Crazy Feather. Uh, let's see. Howdy beers. Nice Silas. Hi, am I late? Backyard Forge. No, man, you're not late. Um, I just started at 8 o'clock, so you're not really late. <clears throat> got my phone on uh, Do Not Disturb this time. All right, we got uh, Dale Harshberger, 10 bucks. Who want to see Steven in a tutu as a drag queen? I think it's a good idea. Man, we'd have to get a lot more money than that. <laughs> Somebody put up on Justin's video, if we get $10,000, how about he wears a dress to the meet and greet? And I'm like, for ten grand for charity, I'll wear a dress to the meet and greet. Uh, let's see. 45. Let's see. Silas. Uh, 20. You know, the, the 10. So we're now at 771. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to catch up on the comments real quick. Uh, they didn't cut the fuel valve off in the carburetor. Yeah. Good old Dale giving giving away uh Okay, so 141 Canadian is $109 US. All right. Well, we get it. I mean, we're we're pretty close. We're I was 141 to 109. Plus, what did we come up with was the other total? Was it 607? So that's fucking man. If my seven year old son was in here, he could tell me exactly what all this stuff was without even uh, doing a calculator. He's crazy good at math. Yeah, not like a nine year old, so I'm like, he can do it. <laughs> <laughs> 746 don't get jealous um, we still don't know what the charity is guys I have written um, uh, Demolition Ranch on three or four different ways I've hit up their Facebook I've hit up their business only email and contact I've hit up um, uh, the YouTube channel haven't heard anything back I wrote something on his channel and then the reply that I got was they, there's three different guys. I think it's going to be like a, a military, firefighter, police, like a, a three-way, like first responders kind of deal. I don't know. Um, I don't know if they they come out with it. And kind of, and I hate to be to, for it to be that way. And if it's, up, I guess it's up to you guys. We can either do the thousand dollars. I can when I'm going down there, I can hand it to them. Say here, here's for the charity. We can just pick another charity of our own or something. Um, you know, I don't. It doesn't bother me either way. I just thought it'd be something cool when I'm down there. It actually kind of gives me a reason to go down there. And then um, also when I'm there, you know, maybe I can talk to Matt and tell him, you know, it kind of introduce myself and see maybe further down the road we can collaborate or anything. I don't know if he's going to want to or not. 
I did, um, um, gosh, I got to tell you about the, the ultimate, the two ultimate trolls that I've had this last couple of weeks. Where's a good place to buy hydraulic cylinders for tractors? Luminet Solar Energy. Um, gosh, Chucky2009 just made a, he made a video not too long ago called, it's um, something surplus, surpluscenter.com, I think. Surpluscenter.com, I think, has uh, hydraulic components and they're dirt cheap and they're all brand new. Uh, let's see. He named them on his last video for Off the Ranch. I haven't watched that video yet. So if you guys know what vid like in and off the ranch, what charities they are, put them up in the comments, please. Um Okay, post of charities today. Okay, so the two ultimate trolls that I had. Um one, the last live stream that I did was from uh, my buddy Colin's shop and I was on my phone. Somebody got my Google Voice bell for the number off the side of my service truck, which is a Google Voice number. They kept calling my phone. I answered it a couple of times, and the guy just said nothing, nothing at all. Didn't have any legitimate, like, trolling etiquette, I guess. I mean, he could have just, like, really, really rolled into a good troll job, and I thought it was funny. Colin thought it was funny. I mean, finally put my phone in Do Not Disturb, and I didn't get contacted anymore. But the guy has continued to call my phone over and over and over during the week. <laughs> never says anything just continues the, the, the call so i thought that was kind of funny you know i could take a good trolling or something it's not that big of a deal um the other deal there is a guy on the comment in one of the videos scott riney or riley or whiny or something I, I just call him scott whiny because he is by far the whiniest viewer that i've ever dealt with in the history of youtube so far he wrote a message to me on several different videos on my Facebook, on my Instagram, on my email, and the same message over and over and over. And I forget what it was about. It was something like, uh, 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 I don't even remember what it was about, but I wrote him back and I said, and I was like, congratulations, you are the whiniest uh, uh, commenter I've had to date. And then at the end of it, I put something that was like, man, maybe you should try sleeping with humans instead of animals. You know, you'd be less stressed. And so then he wrote me back and said, oh, yeah, I hope this comment was worth it to you. I screenshot it and sent it to a buddy of mine that knows Mountain Demolition Ranch, and he's going to uh, view it, and he's now not going not gonna to deal with you at all anymore, and blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> so I finally ended up having to block him. Um, but apparently, you know, he knows a guy that knows a guy that knows a guy that knows Matt, so <laughs> I'm extremely worried about it. Uh, let's see. Pepper Tree Ridge says, instead of doing the charity, he said, um, I'd say keep the thousand. Your contributors are giving it to you. Put it in your shop. Put it in making more excellent content. Uh, I mean, that, that that's up to y'all. You know, like I said, um, uh, uh, you know, I'm perfectly good with doing it for the charity. You know, I mean, I'm not swimming in money, but I'm not hurting either. You know, I mean, there's there's things for the shop that it would help out with, but I think it's it's, it's kind of a neat cause to me to you know to, uh, take the money and help out more fortunate people. But Ryan Gill threw a super chat up. Mark Shipley, thank you, Ryan and Mark. I'm actually I'm actually trying to keep the um, keep track of the super chats right now, like who put up what, because it's just it's a pain in the butt for me to go through after the fact. No, it wasn't Rich V. Rich V wasn't the guy. And um, the guy actually has a YouTube channel, Scott Riney, I think. And uh, he has a couple of videos posted. And, and here's my deal about the um, uh, the trolling. So if you leave me a... Uh, if you're trying to leave a hurtful troll comment on one of my videos or send me a message or something with like derogatory remarks in it and, you know, negative remarks or something. I got a pretty thick skin with this stuff and it doesn't bother me. But when I troll you back and I also troll the troll, the person that left the comment back with the same kind of like re retort, like, you know, well, you're stupid too or something like that. And then you, the, the person gets all upset about it. And that's what Ryan did was he, he left me or Scott Riney. He left a message calling me stupid, so I wrote him a message back, you know, and referring to him as stupid or idiot or something like that. And then, like, judging from his response, 
he actually got like he couldn't it's like he couldn't believe that i had the audacity to respond to him and i was like dude if you're gonna leave a stupid troll comment you gotta expect a stupid troll comment back i mean that's just trolling the internet 101 i've been doing that since like 95 man so i don't get you know like to me i'm I've been on the internet for a long time. I fully expect the troll jobs, you know, to come out and everything. But it's just weird when somebody actually tries to troll you and then you kind of troll their comment back, you know, kind of jab them back. And they just they can't take it, man. It did just blow up. And now it's a huge, huge deal. And I think what Scott's deal is he had written me. I think he's the guy that wrote me on Facebook trying to tell me about. Uh, Ethan, come here. <clears throat> Trying to tell me about um, um, that I should collaborate with another YouTuber that has a motorhome that needs an engine rebuild, and it'd be really good for my channel if I went over there and I'd, I'd expand my channel. And I'm like, man, I'm not driving multiple states away to help a guy do an, an entire engine rebuild on an RV just for the sake of trying to grow the channel. I mean, that would cost me thousands of dollars out of pocket to do it, and I never make that much off the video, so. All right, so, yeah, I mean, uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and the, the uh, 22WMR223, don't mind him, Steven. Oh. The, the, the troll comments are fully expected. Before I ever started doing YouTube videos, I mean, I knew, like I said, I've been on the internet, you know, it shows my age, you know, since 95, 96. Chat rooms, been on uh, forums, all kinds of stuff. It just comes with the territory. If you can't take it, I mean, then, then delete your comments, you know. I mean, don't read any of them. Don't delete them all. Um, Carlton Anderson, <laughs> he says, lots of lab. Matt Carricker would probably block him, too. When I read the guy's response, like, I'm taking a screenshot of your comment, sending it to a buddy of mine that knows Matt so he can see what kind of person you are. The thing that I instantly thought was like, yes, a guy with like six or seven million subscribers has the time for somebody to show him a, a, a screenshot picture of someone else commenting on a different channel that's talking about going to your meet and greet. Yeah, that's yeah. He's definitely got time to do that. And he's definitely really going to care about that. Like, um, I got two kiddos, uh, by the way. One of them, <laughs> you saw the one in the back, Ethan. He really likes to be on the live streams. Um, he likes to be in all the videos. So, uh, yeah, Devin Neely is the Matt would tell him to shut up and grow up. Yeah, yeah, and and. I guess people, some people think they got a lot more power than they do, and I don't care. I mean, he could tell Matt, and Matt could get mad at me. You know, when I get there, he could go, I can't believe you left a comment like that. And I'd be like, okay, well, <laughs> apparently I had you figured out wrong, so let's shoot some guns and uh, uh, have some fun or just not talk to each other again. But like I've said in other videos with the deal, like, man, I'm going down there. I want to meet Matt and them, but I don't expect the dude to sit down and, like, conversate with me. I want to ask him if I can do a video with him. If he says no, it's 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 cool. I don't, yeah, I'm not gonna sit there and be like, uh, like, oh my gosh, you know, I can't believe you didn't do a video with me. I'm like, I, you know, I have no control over how somebody else inter, you know, takes uh, their interpretation of me is. I have no control over how he sees me or my channel, whether he's interested or not. I'm sure he can figure out what I'm doing. I mean, uh, the money on the charity is completely separate to me. It's not a, you know, I'm not looking at it like, oh, this is the way I grow my channel, Ooh, you know, kind of deal. I bought the meet and greet ticket, you know, to go down there and talk to the guy before I ever had the uh, the idea about the money for charity or anything. So it's not why I bought it, you know. I just figured it'd be a good time. But uh, okay, I'm trying to catch up on. How many people we got on here? 128 people watching right now and 45 likes. Guys, hit the like buttons. It does help on the chat. Um. Oh, Carlton Anderson. I was talking about the caller, brother. Brother Steven. Yeah, the um and, and here's the deal. Like Chucky told me when I first started doing videos with him, he goes, Hey man, I wouldn't put your um uh, your dumb your phone number. On the side, and I go, well, it's just a Google Voice number. I can delete it any time. He goes, yeah, but, you know, it's a business number and everything. And I said, you know, by the time my channel gets big enough to have to worry about taking, you know, my phone number being on the side, I'll be 
I'll be good enough on YouTube where I don't have to worry about the phone number on the side of my truck anymore. And that's exactly what's happened. I don't have to worry about that phone number. You know, I can delete the number, change the number, whatever, you know. Doesn't really matter. Um, okay. Uh, I'd rather send a money order than donate 30% to Google from HGF Frank. Yeah, you can do that, man. You can send the uh, uh, mail a money order, or you can do the uh, uh, PayPal. You know that's fine. I think um, I think the Facebook money send deal is cheap too. I mean, it doesn't matter, man. I'll put up my my email address in the comments right now. My email address is stephencock09 at gmail.com. You can write that um, uh, write me and say like, hey, man, I like to send money order for the charity or whatever. I'll give you an address to ship it to and everything. Um, no, it's not my personal address, but Lewis Reed. So this week freaking sucked. What happened, man? I wanted to come help you with the uh, uh, the hydraulic cylinders, but it was too wet. I got too much stuff going on. I can't do it next week, though. Little one with the sunglasses. Uh, let's see. Simple amount of people who doesn't know how to use the KISS method. <laughs> Del Hirschberger, what's the KISS method? Um, let's see. Nick B. No problem, Steve. I seen a video today, so I had to skip through it and find it. No biggie. Uh, I think you're talking about the map video. Beards in reviews. I care. I care about you too, brother. Um... Uh, Master Bauer, yeah, it'd probably be a no. And if you're talking about the uh, the Matt character, yeah, probably. I mean, there's gonna—I don't know how many people are gonna be there. It's gonna be a lot. Got a lot of stuff going on. I'll still take a video when I'm there. You know, I mean, um, uh, probably set it up, shoot some guns off, and I think I got food and stuff. You know, so still have a good time. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are planning on being there, so I'm gonna go there. I don't know anybody going at all. I don't have one single person that I know going there. And I think a lot of people are kind of being the same boat. So hopefully we'll find, you know, I'm pretty good about meeting new people and talking about it. Dick and Dan Van Winkle, uh, will you do a swag bag review for those have to live vicariously through you? What kind of swag bag? Will you do a swag bag review? Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, it depends on how much it costs. Um, I am doing the um, uh, Nipix uh, Patreon review tomorrow, the video, so I should have it up tomorrow and Sunday. I'm supposed to do it this month, and I, I, I forgot all about it, man. Um, has any one of your kids uh, fixed anything around your house that led into a big mess, Todd Johns? No. No, they pretty much, uh, man, they're, they're so much not like I was when I was a kid. I mean, one, they're a lot smarter than I was. Um, they're not as daring and uh, non uh, not attentive to repercussions as I was. Um, so they don't really get into anything that they're not supposed to. I mean, they're kids. So they, you know, they act like they still act like kids and everything, but both of them are, they're so well mannered, you know, that they just don't, um, uh, uh, I don't know. It, it's, you know, everybody's kids are the greatest kids and they're the most hands and the smartest and everything, but they really, they both blow me away. Like a perfect example, like my oldest son, the one that was standing behind me with the sunglasses on, he's really big into reading right now. And we got him in this other book, and it's a 350 page book. He read it in like, I think, two weeks. So we got him the sequel to it, and the number two out of two of seven, I think. We got that second book like two days ago, and he's like, I think he's 300 pages into it or 250 pages into it. He's almost got it uh, read. Um, when I was his age in third grade, I, I didn't read that well. I didn't really, really didn't like reading. Uh, I wasn't very good at it. I couldn't do it that well. Um, my youngest son, uh, Caleb, was, uh, he's really sharp with different kinds of math, loves math, and he's, he's way, way over his grade level for math and reading, and Ethan is, uh, is too. I wasn't like that when I was their age. I was pretty inquisitive, and I liked to take stuff apart, but I was nowhere near um, their intelligent level. Um, let's see. Zaria Johnson. Thank you. Zaria Johnson says, hi, you're awesome. I appreciate that. Um, Carlton Anderson, he has wanted to do a motor swap on his Monte Carlo, so you never know, brother. Yeah, Carlton, I mean, I would love to uh, 
I like to get into all kinds of different things. I've never swapped in a big block. I've never worked on a Monte Carlo. It'd be a new something new for me. Like working on his Hummer, I've only worked on the Hummer one time. I, I love taking on new challenges and new things. And, and I'll ask me about it when I'm there, if we get a chance to or something. Um, I'd be all for it. But from watching his channel, I don't really think he gets too many people to come and like collaborate with him as far as his, on his off the ranch channel. Um, I know on his demolition ranch, when it comes to shooting guns, he collaborates with other gun guys and has some people come in for various different reasons. But on the off the ranch channel, I haven't really seen him collaborate with many many people other than like his own his brother or anything but um beards in review quit your job so you can grow a beard how uh man you're gonna have to tell me some deep and you need to call me or write me on mess uh, facebook or something i meant to ask you some questions about it last time um want to know some details about the job is it paying more better benefits than you had um how long you to grow your beard all that kind of stuff i can call 22 22 all right that's abbreviated enough um master bar man I, I, yeah i'll have a good time i have a good time wherever i'm at you know i can go anywhere and have a good time it doesn't matter where i'm at you know and it, i don't care if it's the middle of a protest <laughs> i've never been at a protest but i can have a good time in the middle of a protest you know and have a good old time everybody thinks i'm ridiculous robert palmore 141 canadian i think it's 107 dollars 109 dollars u.s Um, all right, I'm gonna scroll to the bottom here. Uh, what's the inscription on my cap mean with the bulls and fools? It's just a, it's like a brand of hat. My wife thought it would look good on me because I got blue eyes, and I don't think you guys can really tell, but the the hat is kind of a past, not pastel, but it's kind of a dark gray. Um, and uh, the paisley stuff is blue, so she. We're at Cavender's, and she put it on my head. She's like, I think you look good at it. Um, so it's just a, you know, riding bulls and punching fools. It's kind of a cowboy uh, deal. And I've never ridden a bull, so it's, you know, a little hypocritical, I guess. But I punch some fools. I'm halfway there. Hello from Idaho, from Robert Palmore. Keep encouraging your kids to be awesome and do what they want. Exactly. Hello from Texas, Logan Simon, Mike Humphrey. Hey, Steve, what's the inspector? Oh, I just read that one. <laughs> uh, Frank Harbin, how many motorcycles have you worked on? And I worked on a bunch of dirt bikes as a kid. I haven't worked on uh, a bunch of street bikes. When I was in UTI, one of the instructors had a 87 Honda Magna 750. Um, he sold it to me for 400 bucks in, a, in boxes. There's just like several, four or five different boxes. I put the engine back together. The guy from an instructor, you would think they'd actually label stuff. He didn't have nothing labeled. Everything went in one box. So I lived in a second story apartment. I literally, I spread all the engine parts out and I put together the Legos without a manual or anything. <laughs> put it all back together, got the engine completely back together and then sold the project to a buddy of mine. And it, it set at his place and then he sold it and it sold it. It's probably in his, the trash. Now. Um. Ah, those of you wondering, I'm drinking coffee. I'm not drinking alcohol. Saturdays are my free day. That's when I can drink beer and uh, whatever I want. But still been working out three days a week and um, intermittent fasting. So still got a little ways to go before I get it. Uh, Pepper Chew Ridge should have hit up his live chat this week. Man, I, I had so much stuff going on this week. Which one's better, V6 or inline six? I think the inline sixes are better. They, they take up less space, more torque. Every inline motor put, produces more torque than the v, uh, its V counterpart. Hello from South Dakota, Greater Man 140M. My uh, my brother-in-law's from South Dakota. He spent a lot of most of his days in Ipswich, South Dakota. As a matter of fact, his dad ran a, ran a grader for a long time for the highway department. Um, hello from Idaho, South Dakota. Hello from uh, Arkansas. Uh, Brian Bergman said, we all know a diesel is more efficient than a gas engine. I've always been curious if that is true. Why isn't everything diesel? Um, what? Morning. No, okay. no, I'm done eating for the day, buddy. Thank okay. you though. Let me say hi. Hi. The camera. Yeah, you want to see the camera? There you are. See yourself? Mm -hmm. Tell them to say hi, YouTubes. Hi, YouTubers. 
Um, let's see. Uh, okay, we all know diesel is more efficient than gas. I've been curious if that is true. Why isn't everything diesel? From my understanding and my uh, from what I read in history, when uh, Henry Ford was uh, developing the, uh, I think he was developing the engine. He decided on gasoline because it was the cheapest product that you could get to run, and like it was dirt cheap back then. It was a uh, you know trash basically. Um, so he created to run on gasoline. So there's there's a couple of differences between diesels. One, diesels can be more efficient, but you know the the older diesels um we're all two-stroke diesels they didn't have four-stroke diesels um or they had four-stroke them they were just really really inefficient they came out with gas uh the gas counterparts made more horsepower for a long time diesels got more efficient like the 80s and 90s um but even up until like the early 90s mid 90s i mean diesels weren't as efficient as a gasoline motor and pound for pound they're not as efficient as far as fuel mileage and everything so it always depends on what you need um you need to be towing something heavy if you need to be the uh, long haul or something um, they have their place um, gasoline still has their place the gasoline four-cylinder e engine versus a, 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 a diesel four-cylinder you know like in the 80s and 90s I mean if they were like I said pound for pound you know it's cubic inch for cubic inch the gasoline was more efficient now they've got it into it and I think the reason diesels aren't more popular is because we've just been around gasoline so much Um, greater man 140 says you run a greater for the highway department too well if you're up around Ipswich, switched out to south dakota and you know the spitzers and you've you know who i'm talking about um oh and the uh, yeah diesel engines are more expensive they got more uh more expensive parts you know the injector the actual injectors are more expensive injection palms and all that stuff michael s what color lipstick are you wearing Man, uh, so far, the, the person that has donated the most money, which is Tater Salad, which I don't think is on this live chat right now, um, he's donated the most money. He picked out red. And uh, I didn't realize it, but apparently there's 300 different shades of red. So I'm going to put a task it to my wife, and she's going to pick out the best color of red. But right now, we are at $746, I believe. I might be off, you know, a, a couple of $10 or something like that, but around 750 bucks. So we got 250 to go. Um, my comfort, I just put new gaskets on a Rochester 2, 2 GC, 2 barrel carburetor. Mike, I don't really know what you're, you're I put gas in the bowl vent with a bottle and gas spilled through all the new gaskets. Are they supposed to leak that way? Um, no. I don't really know what you're talking about. I, I understand the, the concept and everything, but I don't know what, what gaskets you're talking about. See, some things like when, when it's written out, like there, there's so much inflection and stuff that you miss on the like written word. It makes it hard to diagnose stuff because I get people that, um that write me all the time they're like hey my, my vehicle's doing this or i tried this and i did this um what is it and like it, it's really hard to diagnose over the um the red that stays on please miss rachel red that stays on <laughs> she's reading the comments too you see anybody post up that says like stephen cox uh generally it's her uh, 22, where's the good of the land tonight? He's actually editing uh, part two of the uh, direct bolt and supply video. Uh, not part two, but the second video that they're having us do or having me do. So Justin's the one that filmed that. And he's editing it, and he's going through right now and doing that. And he's got other videos that he, he's filmed this week that he needs to get out too. So he's working on that. He's actually listening, I think, in the background, and he's sporadically coming in. He hasn't actually posted anything. Um, yeah, it's so a Candace, uh, Bloomhagen. It's like, oh, give Rachel the wheel. She'll know. Yeah. She'll probably get the brightest pink she could possibly find and the stuff that stays on for like 48 days or something. I had, uh, another, uh, uh, Shauna, um, uh, I forget what her channel's name is. Shauna something told me I should do the hundred layer lipstick challenge. I'm like, I don't think so. I think I'm, I'm done with the makeup challenges after this. <laughs> um, Let's see. What's your opinion on the Cat 3306 engine? She got 23,000 hours on her engine. Only work I've done to this engine's new turbo oil cooler. 
the 3306 is one of the best Caterpillar engines they ever made. It's, it's predominant in the oil field. I've rebuilt a ton of them. They're simple engines. The parts are available all over the place. Uh, they make a good amount of torque and power and everything. Um, they're good engines. Uh, I could tell you in the oil field at 24,000 hours when we did the major overhaul. Um, you know, so just keep an eye on your blow by. If you're blow, you don't got any blow by, then just keep rocking it, man. Um, I have my spool valve that's messing up my tractor. It's a strange one, too. It's an MT275 Agco Challenger tractor. I have worked on the Challenger tractors, the Agco Challenger tractors, or Caterpillar tractors, and they are a cluster to do because the engines are usually Sisu Motors um, or Perkins. And then the entire uh, electronic system is not Caterpillar, it's Agco, and Agco does not put out their information or their diagnostic equipment available for public, which is technically illegal, but yeah, Shauna Carmack, that's who I was thinking of, Shauna Carmack, she's the one that did the, um, the told me to do the 100, 100 deal challenge. Um, <clears throat> too late, and too late, uh, too late one organized chaos. Yeah, um, we had a similar issue on that one. We actually had to call Caterpillar's agricultural field mechanics to come out. They had to put a new controller in it, a new injection pump, wiring harness, and a new um, in a gauge cluster. I don't. I think the problem was probably in the harness, and they just like shotgun everything else. But I couldn't ever. They wouldn't show me, you know, their setup, and they wouldn't let me play with the computer. They were kind of assholes. So. Carlton Anderson and Leah Shahan did it also. I guess y'all talking about the uh... yeah finding parts for that, that Challenger is is a pain it's to the point where I, if I had the if I had the money I wouldn't buy one just because it's so hard to get Caterpillar to do anything with them. You can call Caterpillar and it's just usually Caterpillar departments are pretty pretty on the ball, man. Like you call them up, you give them a, a serial number, a model number, they can find you the part. But those Challengers, man. Luminet Solar Energy. So I'm working with Glenn about some of those Nordlock washers for my trailer mount or you know, Taylor mount and Taylor engine mounts. Cool, man. That's awesome. Um, if you guys have actually contacted Glenn or Direct Bolt and Supply and order anything, man, uh, let me know about it. Um, I want to know how your interactions are with the company. It is important for me. And I told them, um, it's like, hey, you know, I, I'm going to, you know, uh, whatever my viewers tell me how it is to interact with you guys is, is we can continue to do this you know, relationship. Cause it's important for me to, to have, you know, sponsors on the channel that are actually, you know, they got good customer service. If they, nothing leads me to believe they don't have good customer service or anything, but um, you know, it's important for me to find out, you know, if they're, they're doing a good job or not. Um, my wife says, Neil, um, says good day, mate from Australia. He says send us an Aussie flag to hang up. <laughs> so a lot of you guys uh, uh, remember a couple of live chats ago. I'm collecting flags to hang up in the shop. I think I've got three flags so far. I believe I have a. I don't know which one. I have a Canadian flag. I got that one. Um, and I got. I don't know which other ones. Maybe my wife remembers. I don't remember all which ones I have. I don't think I have the Germany flag yet. Um, I think Luminet Solar was going to send it, but. Uh, if you guys want to send a flag, I'll put it up in the shop and then when we get the shop cleaned out or uh, organized, then you'll see your flag up there. I'll make sure to get in the videos. Uh, Master Bauer, Steven, have you ever built a tractor transmission? No, sir, I have not. Uh, Sean Newell, 97F150, when you plug a trailer into it while hooked to the trailer, uh, is fall the passenger side trailer light stays on and it does not affect any other lights in the trailer or truck. Why is that? You got a bad ground, probably uh, the ground back there by your frame rail or from your rear trailer lights or your uh, trailer cord itself. Um, bad grounds will cause, uh, or it could be by your, re your relay itself. Um, sometimes when your truck runs fine and you plug in a trailer, you're increasing the load for the electrical system. And all of a sudden, that ground that works perfectly fine for your four lights on your vehicle has uh, been taxed because you're adding more lights. It heats up the uh, the relay or heats up the, your ground, and now you have a problem. Ryan Wilson, the best Caterpillar engine. Any any derivative of the 3306, I think, is a, um, 
to me is one of the best. It's it's really really simple. There's parts everywhere, and I forget which one. The thirty three hundred six they use. Um, they call it something else in the trucks, but the head and like the the, the head and the block are the same. Master Bauer, it's a crap. I still need to send a steel city flag. Um, <clears throat> I haven't hung any of them up yet. I haven't done a lot of work in the shop just because I'm building shelves and organizing everything. Um, some of you guys are on my Instagram. You saw what I was talking about when I've tagged, uh, I think, Doug, Doug Jackson in it and said he created a monster. Um, I'll pull up the, the picture here and I'll show you guys on my phone. It's going to be a uh, a crappy picture, but that's going to be a crappy resolution and everything. Um, but that's what my shop's looking at right now. I built a couple of shelves and uh, I got a bunch of these containers that Doug Jackson uses. So I'm starting to go through everything, kind of trash some things, get rid of the other ones. Um, Starting to, starting to organize some stuff, but it's taking a while. And I didn't realize, like, the, you know, I don't mean to be complaining about money or, you know, too much. And I don't like talking about money that much, especially on YouTube. But um, those two wooden shelves in there, each one of those costs like $180 to build. That's like 180 bucks worth of wood on both of those. So, you know, one week I built, you know, $180 shelf and like a week and a half later, you know, I built another $180 shelf and I spent like $350 on that stuff. And it's like, man, it's, it's, you know, nickels and dimes you. So I still need to build like five or six more shelves, you know, to, to hold everything. Uh, Greater Man 140, do you think uh, all this new machinery, all electronics on it is a complete nightmare once it's uh, 10, 20 years old? Man, only time will tell. Really, I think. You know, stuff is really simple in the 70s, 60s, and 70s, and it got really complicated in the 80s as far as cars and uh, on the road. Equipment was like that until about 2000 and 2000, 2005. They started adding a bunch of electronics, and it was a nightmare. And there's harnesses everywhere, and it was like it was a big pain in the butt. Now, in like the last five, six years, they've really cleaned up like how the harnesses. It's amazing because you got so many sensors on the engine, but it looks really, really clean and like on a new caterpillar stuff man everything is um, uh really really simplistic looking they've eliminated a, bu a bunch of stuff i think a lot of the electronics on it and the wiring stuff actually makes it easier to diagnose because you got more information you can read instead of having to get mechanical readings um okay sean newell thank you stephen cox appreciate your help no problem man uh, Neil H., I do not have a post office box yet, but I do have an address that I forward stuff to. You can actually email, you can mail stuff to Walgreens, uh, FedEx, and uh, they'll hold a package for you at FedEx or at uh, Walgreens. Believe it or not, it's kind of like a makeshift PO box that I don't have to pay for. Um, uh, you should have Chucky weld you some real racks up for your shop, Luminate Solar Energy. I would, you know, and he'd be well, more than willing to, but even just buying the steel for it. If I bought steel to weld up the racks and everything, maybe $400 a shelf, you know? I mean, it still costs a lot more money than the wood does. Okay, I feed to build shelves. Yeah, Chuck Pennington, the plywood I use is like $30 a sheet. Each one of those shells has two sheets, so that's uh, seven, you know about you know, $30, $35 a sheet, so that's $70 for two sheets. And then uh, the, the two-by-fours, it doesn't look like it, but each one of those shells has, I think, like 15 two-by-fours in it. Um, and then a couple of pounds of screws, you know, a pound of screw each. It's just it, it, it adds up. Uh Marky Mark, you can go fuck off. Um, let's see. Still expensive. 
Uh, can't replace 3306 with the C11. 3306 reliable, but old tech, pre-combustion, no intercooler. Yeah. Couple bull cars. Uh, Steve, you can get the industrial racking bolt together uh, stuff for cheaper than you can buy two by fours. Hogshead Studios, I have like yeah you know, the boltless racks. Um, I do. I have seen them on there, and for the size that I need to put the big containers on, those uh, those bins uh, are are too wide for the the boltless. Racks, so I'd have to get like pallet racks, and the pallet racks are a couple hundred bucks a piece. Like so, I've I've did the I've done the math, and I can build the shelves for 150, 160, and I can actually like uh, they'll hold everything I need them to hold. Um, there are some you know some really cheap uh, uh, metal, you know, if you have like a, a single car garage or two car garage, like what AVE works out of. But yeah, you can't, you know, you can't have huge uh, containers sitting all over the place. But I, I think, you know, unless you have another link for a, uh, the metal shelvings that I haven't found. Um, Scorpion Z, yeehaw, I ain't going to miss a stream. Um, let's see, twenty dollars Dolores for scales, one hundred fifty Dolores uh, for lumber, plus two other shelving, four to five hundred dollars minimum. Yeah, it's just, it's not a big deal, you know. It's just like when you when you have something, you get you know. When I have something, I get all excited about it, and I want to like, I want it, you know, every, like everybody. I need instant gratification. I want everything now, and so I do this with the with uh, engines too, where I look at it. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, yeah, rebuilding that engine should only take eight, nine hours. And then like 37 hours later, we're done. And like building those shelves, well, each one of those shelves took me like five or six hours to build each shelf, you know? So if I factor in my time with the money that I spent on shelves, it would have been cheaper just to buy some like pallet racks or something, you know, and put them in there. But you know what? He got time for that. Luminous Solar Energy. The problem with the pallet racks here is there's one company that goes through and apparently flags all the, the used pallet racks because they sell new pallet racks. And they just, man, all of Craigslist in North Texas has this one company. They got like 47 ads a day on there for selling new pallet racks. So it's hard to find them, at least here. I haven't tried Facebook Marketplace, though. Um, maybe I should. Oh, Mike Humphrey uh, says, sorry, me more sick earlier. The carburetor spilled through the top of the air horn gasket. You shouldn't have to use any silicone on the carburetors. Usually the, the silicone doesn't work. Eventually it goes through. It, uh, the, the gasoline eats it through. Even the stuff that's like meant for gasoline, like it is, so my opinion, you know, my experience doesn't work. JK Canvas building party. Man, I'd be up for that. Uh, put a wanted ad up. Yeah, I could try that. Well, Beards in review. Dakota says, thanks, Auntie Rachel. <clears throat> um, oh, so, okay, so future projects. This is something I wanted to talk about for the channel. So right now, I don't really have any projects at my house to do. The only thing I have in my shop to do is get the stuff that I've had in storage, go through it, sell or donate or throw away the stuff that I'm not going to use, I don't want anymore, um, build, the, uh, you know, build some shelves, Build a, a work table, um, build a workbench on the side and everything. Have a spot for everything to get it off the ground and put it on the sides. I have that project, but other than like an actual mechanical project, I don't have any projects right now. Um, I was looking at a truck um, and it was up in uh, North Texas and I'm, I'm a huge Dodge fan. I'm especially a fan of like the 1970s uh, Dodges and there's one on uh, uh, Craigslist that I saw and it's been on there for a little while. And I was like, man, I, I really want to get that truck because it's a gasoline truck, but it's a one ton four by four single cab, which is kind of a rare, rare to find a four by four, one ton Dodge, you know, a seventies model. They didn't make a whole lot of them. And um, the ones they did, they're usually like, uh, they're kind of bastardized where people have chopped them up. So I found it and it's a good price on it and everything. And then uh, we sold our house in Utopia. We closed on it yesterday. We signed all the paperwork and everything. But the landowner that had the house, we did it owner finance. 
So to get the house, there's a large down payment. We made a large down payment, went towards the principal and everything. Um, so the landowner kind of like gave me my amortization schedule in January. said we owed like $163,000 on the house. So I gave that as a payoff amount to the loan company and everything. Well, they contact him and he upped the price to like 170,000. He added, you know, like 10 or 11,000, I think $11,000 worth of fees and all kinds of other stuff. None of it, which was on the, the original contract or anything. And basically if you sell a house, um, whenever you're selling a house, if there's a note on it, they can pretty much put whatever they want on there and they can kind of hold the sell up on the house ransom. Like, I can't really argue with the guy about it. I can't say, um, you know, I can't argue with him, but he doesn't have to like to accept the money for the deed or anything. It's like pretty much, he can do whatever he wants. So yeah, I see that buddy. Um, so he jacked the price up and it justified his cost. And so we sold the house. So I was supposed to make like 15 grand on the house or something like that. We ended up making like four grand on the house sale. So that cost me like $11,000. And now I have the option of taking him to court to see if I can get the money back or not. And we don't know if we'll be able to win it or not. I think we're probably going to go through and do that and like take him to court over it because it's a lot of money if we do win, but it's going to take up a lot of time. So I was going to take that money. I was going to buy this project truck. It was going to be a gasoline one ton four by four Dodge. And uh, I've always wanted a truck like that because I've always wanted to build like a, a, a Lopi cam 360 for that truck and, and paint it black and, you know, black everything out. So when you, you know, when you roll around and hear it, it's got that big, you know, <laughs> sound. Um, but can't do it because the stupid house didn't sell for as much. And, uh, the other money has to is earmarked for their stuff, you know, the bills and whatnot. So that sucks. Um, that was going to be a project. I'm talking to Chucky right now. I think he and I are going to do a deal on a, uh, seven, three, where we're going to buy that, pull the engine out, rebuild it, um, get it going. Um, <laughs> luminous solar energy, you love. <laughs> Must have looked it up. That's awesome. Uh, Noah Newman says, I got a gas Dodge D400. I mean, I like to get the, 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 the one ton, uh, the seventies model one ton trucks, you know, it's it, one of my like vehicles I'm going to build, you know, eventually is going to be that seventies model four by four and painted a you know, kind of a, a, not a flat black, but not a shiny black, kind of that, that matte colored black. And build, you know, a lumpy carbureted 360 for it. You know, big low cam in it, exhaust and all that stuff. But I just have to uh, put it on hold. <laughs> How does that truck sound again? Just look up cam lope on YouTube. I'm not going to do it again. Uh, Scorp NZ, $50, man. Thank you. <laughs> you want to see me in drag? I'm not going to wear a dress. Um, somebody in Justin Good Lands video suggested for $10,000, I'd wear a dress to the meet and greet. So if you guys want to see me wear a dress to the meet and greet, then yes, $10,000 will definitely, I'll, I'll wear it. You know, I'll gladly wear it to the meet and greet. I'll shoot guns in it and everything. But out there in no hell, it's going to be two, 10 grand, you know, between now and a couple of weeks. You know, we've only got, um, uh, let's see, 14 days, 15, 16 days. So we're still, um, uh, I think we're at $200 right now. I think we need 200 bucks to go. Okay. So don't take Hill, uh, don't take Hill to court. Remember Chucky's experience. Yeah. Master Bauer. And that's the, the him. That's my, my problem with it is I've, I've talked to an attorney and I said it, it's, it's loose, you know, can you know, is it legal what he did? No. Is it, you know, is it right? No. Is it legal? Eh, maybe. So yeah, it's a, is it, it's a huge waste of time is what it is. And, you know, on maybes and court fees and everything. Scorpion Z, the amount, including your $50. Um, I'm guessing NZ is New Zealand. Is that right? Um, 50. We're at $796 right now. So we'll just call it 800 to make it, make it even. We're about 800. So I think we need $200.
Um, <clears throat> Master Barry says ten thousand dollars. Let's go, people. So Jay Young, what's up, man? I would be hot in a dress <laughs> if it was one hundred and ten degrees outside. <laughs> You guys that don't know Jay Young, he's got a YouTube channel. Um, uh, he does a lot of live streams on his, and his. Uh, I enjoy watching his live streams because he'll set his live streams up, and he just lets it go during the day. And like sometimes he'll you know, be sitting down talking to the camera. Other times he's just working in the background, and it's interesting to watch someone else just normally work. As, as ridiculous as that sounds, it, it's you know it's, it's just kind of an interesting deal to, to watch somebody else you know uh, take stuff apart and like their interactions and. And something I enjoyed watching when I watched Jay Young's was in my head, everything in my, you know, that I do should have taken half the time. And then when I, when I watch, when I really pay attention to myself, it's because I, I go from my truck to over here and then back to my truck to get a tool and then back over here and then back to my truck to get a tool and back over here and then back over here to grab a part and then back over here. And I can watch Jay Young do the same exact thing that I, I struggle with was go back and forth, back and forth. And gosh, if you had a pedometer on you, you know, like a get fit or something, or a, a whatever they call those little bands uh, that you wear, I bet you we were on, you know, you probably walk, you know, seven, eight miles a day, just going back in front to the freaking, uh, uh, the deal. Lewis Reed said he had a 16 hour day yesterday. Gosh, and it rained. Broke hills on and I'm getting distracted. I like roadkill. Um, yeah, Mark Shipley said he used to have a 75 power wagon one time. One time. So the, the vehicles I'm going to own, I'm going to have a 70s model something, 4x4, you know, preferably a one-ton Dodge with a gasser, uh, gas engine in it. Um, going to have one of those. I'm going to have an old-school power wagon, like the 1930s, 40s, um, like Sergeant Rock, that style. Um, that, that's been one of my dream trucks too. And then the car I'm going to have is like a, a 68, 69 Dodge Charger. That's my, like my dream vehicles. Scorpion Z. Yeah. New Zealand. That's awesome, man. I want to go to New Zealand one day, man. It looks like a beautiful country. I also want to go see, uh, um, uh, God, the world's fastest Indian, uh, Burtman row. Is that right? Burt Monroe's, uh, I think he has, like, they have a little uh, commemorative, commemorative deal for him. Those of you who don't know who Burt Monroe is, there's a movie called The World's Fastest Indian with Andy, Anthony Hopkins in it. So Burt Monroe was native to New Zealand. He built an Indian motorcycle, like a 1910, 1913 or something like that, Indian motorcycle. The dude handmade everything, made his own pistons by hand, everything. Uh, casted his own limited for him, machined him down, all that. Um, and he had the world's fastest Indian motorcycle. So he... Uh, shipped it over to the U.S. and went to the Bonneville Salt Flats because the problem he had in New Zealand is he couldn't find enough uh, flat area to get the top speed of his bike. So he went to uh, the Salt Flats and actually got to run his bike. And I think he got like a 200 miles an hour on this 1918 or 1915, whatever it was, Indian. It's an awesome movie. It's definitely not the, uh, uh, I guess, the normie, uh, uh, you know, ridiculous <laughs> the other movies I watch, like Avengers and stuff like that. Saw that. Uh, yeah, please don't put my husband in a dress. <laughs> my wife says, y'all please don't put my husband in a dress. I don't think we have anything to worry about. That would be, um, I said, there's like seven, 16, 17 days. The, or no, the 13th, there's 14 more days left. Um, but there's only 14 more days, so ten thousand dollars in 14 days is not not gonna happen. James Sutton, thank you for the super chat, sir. I'm typing in how much I'm trying to keep track of who who put up what. So at the end, I can figure out how much closer we are. We are $198 away from the thousand dollar mark. I haven't seen, like I said, I haven't seen Tater Salad. He's the one that drew, you know, <laughs> drove most of this up. TK Rebeck, probably at my wife, Rachel. Are you saying he doesn't have the body for it? If so, we should probably take your word on that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and if we don't, if we take that dude to court, get some money back, then I'm gonna buy a project. But the the Ford truck project with Chucky should be a good project. We're gonna pull the engine out, rebuild it. I'm probably gonna rebuild the transmission and then um, uh, put some stuff on it. I'm gonna try to look for a sponsor for it. Um, I want you know I want to try to find a sponsor for some of the diesel parts uh, for the rebuild kit. I don't know if uh, Direct Bolt and Supply will sponsor it or Nordlock might sponsor, you know, part of it or something want to be in on it. I don't know. Uh, I got some people I got to write. I'd like to at least get the – I contacted a company by getting the engine rebuild kit sponsored, and then they basically they couldn't see the uh, uh, what I was up to, basically, I guess. They couldn't figure out what my angle was. Some companies are like that when you ride them. Like, they've never – they don't really know what YouTube is. They don't, you know, they they know what YouTube is, but they don't really understand, you know, how sponsoring videos on YouTube will actually benefit them at all. And so when you ride them and try to like get them to the sponsor stuff, they I, they kind of look at it like, what's this? Yeah, this guy's just trying to get free stuff from us and uh and, and no benefit to us. And some some channels, you know, I can see that and I understand their apprehensiveness about it. But it's one of those um uh it's one of those things where as a company, I think you have to be in, you have to start getting involved with social media as time goes on. You have to be involved with the internet to make it, get your company to grow, you know, especially like um, with my sons, when they get my age, that's how they're going to find stuff. They're going to find stuff off the internet. They're going to find stuff from reviews. They're not going to go, you know, to the thrifty nickel or, you know, to the local forums or anything. They're going to find it off YouTube. So how did Justin go to the land? Did you get the um, uh, videos done or to a stopping point at least? Uh, Ryan Wilson, have I worked on a Detroit diesel? I have worked on some Detroit diesels. Um, I have. I think it was a Series 60 Series. What? Can I do a little comment? Can you put a comment? Mm -hmm. What do you want to put? Uh, emoji. An emoji? Mm -hmm. Do you know how to do the emojis? Yeah, you just hit that emoji button. Oh, that one? Yeah. Which one do you want to put? <laughs> I can't tell them. Oh, you can't tell them? Yeah, of course I can't tell them. And they... All right, a man who shaves, uh, who saves his beard for a woman deserves neither. Shaves his beard, okay. Y'all are getting into the beard stuff. Listen, get this. Oh, man, that's a bunch of... <laughs> yeah, Scorpion Z. Yeah, there's a lot of. Don't shake the table so much. I keep doing it too. It's making the uh, you know, the camera shake like this. Yeah, yeah, and that's a deal. Like whenever, like a lot of the businesses that I ride that I want to be sponsored, you know, want to sponsor the channels because they, it's like Nordlock. They, uh, they have a good product. You know, I believe in the product. I think it's your service. You know, like there's a couple of diesel companies out there I've dealt with. Um, engine re the the company that I get my engine rebuild kits from is uh, agkits.com. I bought several kits from them. I've talked to them on the phone. They're a great company, and I'd love for them to sponsor the the videos. But you know the the marketing department just doesn't quite understand what I'm what I'm trying to get out of it. You know, and I basically told them was like, hey, if you, you know, just give me the uh, 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 if you'll supply me with the rebuild kit for the engine, then I'll you know I'll put it on there. We'll talk about where they got it from and tell you know. Uh, the supply engine rebuild kits and not, no charge for the videos. All right, but that's enough. Um, so, I mean, and, and I get, you know, I, I can't fault them. I'm not mad at them or anything, but it's companies like that, you know, and, and the other companies like the. Oh, yeah, okay, you started a whole trend. Yeah. Um, so, hopefully, Chucky and I are going to get this truck. It's going to be a 2000. One or it's going to be a seven three Ford F three fifty four door four wheel drive. We're going to pull the engine out. I'm hoping to get some diesel companies that want to sponsor some of the parts on it. I'd like to find a company that would sponsor the uh, uh, like the fuel injectors. One of them is Rosewood Diesel. They actually rebuild injectors. I've installed several sets of their injectors. They make good good tools and have good injectors. Talk to them, see if they want to sponsor the channel or help out, and some other ones. Um, uh, yeah, try, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. If I can't get any sponsors for it, fine. If I can, great. 
If you got, if any of you guys have any suggestions as far as who I should hit up for a, a sponsor, or whatever, um, you know, for stuff like that, then uh, let me know. Or if you guys want to sponsor something, you know, we can always uh, uh, talk about your company. Uh, e rated 78 says, Hey, Steven, do you see a Cummins engine swap like the boss in your future? I do. Um, I am going to come and swap something eventually. I wanted to come and swap my serve, my green service truck. Um, and I thought about it and I'd planned on it, but I think I kind of went going a different route now. Started a whole chat of emojis. Yeah, you did. Uh, Tommy sixty four ten says, "Guys, makeup artist." Actually, Justin with Good Land does. Justin has a. Uh, uh, hang on, buddy. Just came in from pulling the bed and replacing the fuel pump on my two thousand F one fifty truck. Still won't start. Just came in from pulling the bed and replacing the fuel pump on my 2000 F-150. Truck still won't start. Do you have voltage too? Are you getting fuel pressure? Um, a real quick, easy way to check is go up, have somebody turn the key on while you're pushing in the Schrader valve on your fuel rail on the engine to see if fuel pump shoots out. If it doesn't, go to your passenger side kick panel. Take the kick panel off. That's when you're looking down in the fender well over here on the right. Um, you can stick your finger in there and see there's a little red button. Push that red button up and see if it's sprung. If it's sprung, that's your problem. <laughs> you guys, uh, Justin with a good land, just put up a video link. If you want to see who's going to do the lipstick, that's the, the girl in that video is who's going to do the lipstick. Good old Sam Wise Ganji. Yeah, I started a whole chat of. Emojis. Yeah. Now everyone's putting a emoji in the thing. So yeah, I really want to do the the, the coming swap. The, the problem right now, um, uh oh, the Justin's link not work. Open link and new tab. Oh no! <gasps> it works for me. Maybe I need to approve it. Oh no! Uh, oh no! Ah, uh, it's working for me. What? I know it won't let people, you know. Oh. Hey, go watch TV, okay? Mama. <laughs> David Verablik. Verablik. Super chat of fifty dollars says Casper and I want to see you in a thong and a leather bustier. Oh, that's disturbing. <laughs> disturbing to somebody who wants to see me in that. And disturbing the thought of me being in it. Um, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Like I said, for for ten grand, I'll wear a dress to the meet and greet and wear it during the meet and greet. But uh, that that's about as much as you guys are gonna get out of me. Sorry, but I do have some sort of moral standards. <laughs> So we are $852 up. So we've got about 148 bucks to go. And we've been doing the uh, live chat for uh, 50 minutes. So I guess I could just like, I could just shut it all down and not do another live chat. And then I don't have to do it, right? <laughs> okay, the link that Justin put up doesn't work for um, uh, iPhones. If you go over to Justin's, uh, or no, if you type in... Um, uh, Miss uh, uh, Maya on the YouTube. It's M I S S, and then second word M I A. Um, the title of the video is "From Makeup Fail to Photoshop Ready." That's the girl that's going to do the lipstick. So, if you guys want to see who he's talking about, who's going to do the lipstick? I was going to do it myself, but apparently, that's not the right motion. I don't know. Um, oh, so back to the uh, the engine swap. Man, there's a whole lot of projects I'm gonna do in the future, and I fully plan on on doing it. But just you know, to, to like to transparent with you guys and the, the guys that are watching right now, a lot of you guys are like my core subscribers. You are all the guys that you know, leave all the good comments and, and you know you like the videos immediately. Um, very you know extremely supportive to the channel and everything. Um, so you guys are like. Uh, uh, 
who I need to be transparent with. So the YouTube channel, like it's doing pretty well. You know, it's, it's doing extremely well, way, way better and faster than I ever thought it would. I, I knew in my head that I would get to this level of YouTube with 82,000 subscribers, but I figured it would take me three or four years to get there. And I've been there. I've got, I've done it like 16 months. So the YouTube channel is making a decent amount of money right now. You know, it's making, I think, this last month, this month so far, I think I've made $4,500 off of YouTube, which is, you know, it is a lot of money. Um, keep in mind, it's the only, it's the only uh, income I have right now is off YouTube. Um, I don't live past my means, so, you know, it's, it's fine for now. And I do have some, a couple other things I do to make money, you know, not, not as much as that. But the $4,500 minus 30% um, for taxes that you have to pay. Oh, let's see, 4,500 minus 30% is 3,150. So $3,100 a month um, breaks down to 31, let's see, there's 4.5 weeks divided by 3,150. Oh, I did that wrong. I don't know, 3,150 a month is, um, 12 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour, something like that. Um, I'll do this right. 31.50 divided by 4.5. $700 a week, which is divided by 40, which is about 17 bucks an hour. Uh, that's out, you know, after taxes and everything. So about 17. My last job, I was making $34 an hour, which is twice that, plus overtime. So I was make more than that and everything. So not saying it's not a decent living and everything, but it's not enough to buy projects and rebuild engines and do you know, come in swaps and stuff without having another source of income. Um, so like I said, I'm not complaining. It's doing fine and it's growing. It's, you know, YouTube's doing it. It's treating me extremely well. Um, but it, it, it's not enough to, like I can't pay my bills and a truck, pay, you know, uh, can't pay for you know basic maintenance stuff and bills and buy projects and stuff you know i had this discussion with chucky today we're talking about buying his ford 73 and i was like man you know when i was working you know 60 70 hours a week i had plenty of money you know 10 15 grand a month i was doing fine you know i can afford to drop you know a couple of grand on a project each month no big deal um but i can't do that right now because i'm trying to I'm, I'm i am growing the youtube channel focusing on youtube making videos and stuff so um <laughs> um so it, it's growing um and it's doing great and everything so i don't want you guys thinking i'm complaining about it or anything but i want you know i think some of you, you know a lot of you guys don't know how much youtubers make and, and i don't know how much other youtubers make like i got no clue how much chucky makes i don't ask chucky i don't want to know how much chucky makes um i don't know how much justin with good land makes i don't ask you know it's not it's none of my business kind of deal i can tell you from mine um you know that's what i'm making now with the uh, with averaging uh i think every 48 hours we're at like eighty thousand views for 48 hours or something like that so that's what it ends up being um so yeah the uh the channel is doing great um tommy tommy asks how long is it taking you to get to that stage with youtube I can tell you, I seriously started making videos. Let me go back and look. My channel. <clears throat> Come over here to videos. Yes, sort oldest to newest. The first video that I did that I was like, okay, I, I seriously want to start making YouTube videos. And we'll start putting them out was um, uh, two years ago. It was November 21st, 2015. Um, and then it, it's grown since then. So 15, 16, 17. So about three years um, to get where I'm at now or, you know, a little over two, uh, a little over two years. Which, you know, it's fantastic for YouTube. I mean, the, if you get... I think it's a thousand subscribers. You're in the one percent club of YouTube. You know, 
More than 99% of YouTubers and channels have less than 1,000 subscribers. It's either 1,000 or 100 subscribers. I forget which one it is. Scorpion Z says, you shall not pass. 105 uh, New Zealand. What is that in U.S. dollars? Does anybody know? I don't know what kind of uh, money New Zealand has, so... Update, uh, let's see, so 200. Yeah, if one of you guys could figure out how much that is. Um, YouTube don't pay enough. Yeah, Tommy, it doesn't, you know, just, just living off of the YouTube revenue, no, it doesn't. But um, I am a mechanic. I do do, you know, some side jobs for people. You know, I, I make some supplemental income that way. Um, I have picked up a couple of sponsors in the, in the interim that's paying a little bit. So it's it's growing, you know, and I treat YouTube as a business, you know, and, and, and just like I did my other business when I started my heavy equipment mechanic stuff, you know, the first first couple of months, you know, the first six months was pretty hairy. You know, I didn't make near as much as I needed to. But in the last six months of that first year, I made great. And YouTube's the same way. Right now, January, February, March, April, May is, is pretty historically bad months for YouTube. They don't make that much. Um, historically, the best months for YouTube are midsummer and October, November, December. Most people's like exponential growth happens in October, November, December, um, which is crazy. Um, let's see. Okay, so New Zealand, one hundred and fifty is one hundred and eight dollars US. And he did 50 earlier. So does anybody have a total on the, the live stream? They can pull up and see how much has been on this live stream. Because there's been a couple of different denominations. There's been um, 150, 50, which is 200 New Zealand. So what is it, about $130? Yeah, so 150 New Zealand is $108. Um, and Chuck Pennington, yeah, the I'm gonna have to start doing some side jobs, and I have since I've been here, um, since I moved to Stephenville, I have I've done zero. It's 144 dollars um, from Scorpion Z so far. Boy, here on the side of caution, do 145. Um, Uh, so since I moved to Stephenville, I've done zero advertising. I haven't advertised at all. Just word of mouth, a couple of people. I've told them I'm a mechanic, you know, and I can do some stuff. Um, back before I moved down to uh, San Antonio, when I moved down to San Antonio to get customers, I'd go out and shake hands. I'd walk into businesses and stuff, and and I haven't done that here uh yet i'm thinking about doing it i don't i don't know i need to pick up a couple of jobs you know or i can supplement a couple of grand in a month so pepper tree uh, ridge is fall people are starting to hibernate <laughs> yeah get down to hibernation oh yeah people are starting to hibernate yeah they sit inside their house um robert palmore do you call me a whore subscriber no Call you an awesome subscriber, Robert. I like your uh, your messages, your comments, and you're a great subscriber. We we'll never call you that. So it's too late. One organized chaos says it makes about 180 bucks a month, uh, about almost 4,000 subscribers. Spencer Hotchletler, uh, Hotch Tetler, can you give out a shout out from Iowa? 150 NZ, 50 50 NZ. There's your shout out, buddy. Uh, Chuck Pennington and your truck got your numbers. You know, the um, the rap on the truck got me a lot. It got me a whole bunch of jobs from people approaching me at, like, gas stations and stuff. Said, hey, you know, uh, you work on this stuff. And, yeah, I've gotten zero. For the phone number being on the side of the truck, it has netted me zero customers. Not a single person's ever called that number asking me if I worked on stuff. Um, well, I'll take that back. One time it did, and it was the guy who worked at a diesel place. He went out to an excavator, had no clue what he was doing, got out there, called me, asking my help, uh, <clears throat> called me, asking for my help, asking me some questions about it. 
And I told him, I, I gave him a couple of things to try. And I was like, look, man, I'm not trying to be a, a dick, but you're a competitor of mine. You know, I, I, I can't sit on a phone with you for, you know, an hour <laughs> telling you how to fix an excavator because I'm not making anything out of it. And he goes, you know what? If you want the job, you can have it, dude. I'll give you know, how about I just give the dude your phone number? And the way this guy got my phone number, he saw my truck driving down the road. He took a picture of it, showed it to his boss at the diesel place that he worked at to tell his boss, hey, um, this is how we should wrap the trucks. So he actually had the phone number on and called me. Well, then he gave that phone number to that guy. That guy was the, the, the guy that worked at a company that talked me into moving down to San Antonio and working on their equipment. So that's all I've done for like the last year and a half is just his uh, equipment. So it did lead me to that job. Um, is advertising very important for being a mechanic? If you work for yourself, it is. RC Pilot 2009 says, hi, Steve. Great channel. No problem. Thank you, sir. Moose427 says, why can't I send more than $2.99? I don't know, bud. Um, I don't, I don't have a clue, sir. YouTube does whatever the hell it wants sometimes, apparently. Uh, let's see, two ninety nine. Um, Moose did another two ninety nine. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why it does that, man. Uh, like I said, YouTube deleted my last live stream from Colin Shop, which I really liked that live stream because I went around and showed you guys and stuff in Colin Shop and had some really cool tools and stuff, and they just deleted it. Sorry, gone. YouTube has no clue what happened. I didn't delete it. I didn't bid on YouTube that day. I just checked my, my studio app on my phone, and you can't delete a video from the studio app. Um, and I just I pulled it up. It said video deleted, gone. And I was like, what? So I checked and it was gone. Um, there was no strikes on it. There was no, I didn't get any kind of community guideline strikes or anything. It just, it, whatever happened. JK Canvas says, don't forget to convert from Australian dollars to US dollars. Hey, I had a, uh, uh, a question for you guys. Are any of you guys pilots or have your private pilot's license? Uh, one of my things I've always wanted to do is I've always wanted to get my private pilot's license. Um, there's a guy here in Stephenville that has a website. I wrote him about doing some pilot lessons and had no contact back, didn't write me back or anything. So, uh, whatever. But I don't know how the pilot's lessons work. Um, do you go to a school and you, do you just like you pay the entire, like, uh, I don't know, is there six classes you go to and then you start flying? Is it just hours? I can't find any actual, like everybody says, oh, well, you need a certain amount of pilot, uh, 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 you know, with instructor hours. Then you need a certain amount of hours flying by yourself before you can get your pilot's license. Like, okay, so I don't know what the pro the, uh, the process is. Do you do you go to a class, you sit in a class for, what, 40 hours, and then you go to the plane, you go straight to the plane, and then you just do it all on a plane? I mean, I can't find any information on it. And then how does this break down as far as how did you, how did it pay? Like, or how'd you pay for it? Is it just by lesson? Um, is there a total amount? Like, you just pay it all up front or whatever. 45 Nuts just did $128 Canadian. Oh, he already did 109. Man, you really want to see some lipstick. Uh, let's see, 128. I think we're at the uh, $1,000 mark, guys. Pretty sure we're over it. I haven't totaled it all up yet, but I think, uh, I mean, we started off with like $608 on this uh, live stream, and I think we've got it, and I think we've got it 400 bucks. Um. That's a hundred forty-five. That's a hundred dollars. Okay. But yeah, I think I think we're either really really close. Or we're over. Maybe one of you guys can actually look on the uh, uh, the live stream on your phone or and tell how much money's been donated. <clears throat> uh, K O Vit two two four says my six seven cousin has a ticket idle. I've heard some say that's normal. Should I have it looked at? Thirty thousand miles under warranty. Um, the six seven Cummins did have a tick. They do have an audible tick. I don't know if there's an update for it. 
if you have a question and it's under warranty, I would, man, I'd call a service advisor and ask them or take it up there and have one of their mechanics tell you that it's normal or not normal because I can't, I haven't heard it. I don't know how loud this tick is. It might be a problem, but if it's under warranty, take it up to Dodge Alert, ask them, hey, can you have a mechanic listen to this? Tell me if this problem needs to be addressed and get it taken care of while it's under warranty because you definitely don't want to be, don't want to be a, uh, uh, left with a freaking whole rebuild luminous school yes you go to school each hour and some classroom work all in all about 1200 bucks see i keep hearing different things about the private pilots lessons i keep hearing like some people say yeah it's only a grand and like from around line another one said it's like a total of like seven to ten thousand i don't know where they're getting that from i mean do you have to buy books do you have to are they including like renting the plane i mean like I said, I want to do the private pilot's license, and I don't know. I guess I just have to call a school or something. Uh, you have to attend and pass ground school, then you go to pilot training. How long is a uh, ground school? And you just like you you sign up for it, and you go like I don't know, night classes for a week or something, or are they a month or what? <clears throat> If any of you guys are in North Texas or you know an instructor or something that I can come to the classes with, man, let me know. Um, I mean, I have to, you know, budget it in and everything. I'm willing to, you know, save the money and, and do it. I just, uh, I don't, I like to set goals and I don't know of anybody that does it other than cold calling a school or anything. And then I have to drive to Fort Worth and do it. And so I want to see what the normal procedure is and how to get at it the cheapest. Oh... Master Bauer, this is what I want to see some lipstick. I don't have the lipstick. So um, we're actually going to do me and go to the land and his niece. His niece is going to put it on. Me and Justin, I think, are going to meet up next week and we're going to make an actual video instead of a live stream. We're going to do live, we're going to do a video of it and put it up on my channel. But I will let you guys know before, before I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the video up on like the. 12th or 13th or maybe the 14th, the day of the meet and greet for Off the Ranch, or Demolition Ranch. Um, Tommy wants to know, says, Stephen, do you do exam every few years to be a mechanic in the States? Nope. There's no licensing. There's no certifications needed. There's no exams. Any swinging, uh, swinging dick out there can go buy – any, you know, don't even have to buy tools. You just come in and say you're a mechanic and, and that's it, which I really do think there should be a certification program, standardization like ASCs or something. RC pilot says ground school, accumulate required hours of flying, must pass proficiency tests. So however many hours it takes to demonstrate you're capable of flying and take final check ride with FFA examiner. How long is a ground school? Yeah, at uh, Moose 427. Um, what Scorpion and Z said is if you're not using Super Chat, you can send it through Patreon with a note to Steven what it's for. Send him a PM after you're done. Um, uh, you've done the transaction in Patreon. Yeah, you can do the Patreon. Um, or I've got a, a, a PayPal account that you can send it to. Uh, let's see. A Cessna, which is two to four seater, is $1,200 down here in Florida. Is that for the day? What is that, 100, 120 bucks an hour? Chuck Pennington, I'm too old to join the Air Force, buddy. 35, about to turn 36. Uh, TK Rebecca, uh, it's stephencox09 at gmail.com. Just like you spelled my name right there, type in that name with a 09 at gmail.com. You got it. If you know someone with a plane, you can save money on flight costs. Wayne Cruz. Wait, I don't know anybody with a plane. I don't know any pilots. I don't know anybody that owns a plane. Um, yeah. Todd, John, Steve, just get a wingsuit, jump off a cliff. Ta-da, you're flying. <laughs> I don't think you like me very much. <laughs> How you doing from Kettering, Ohio, Tim Miller? Pretty good, man. Moose 427, you want to send an Aussie flag? Heck yeah, man. Just uh, – uh, email me at stephencox09 at gmail.com. 
uh, depending on equipment. Matt off the ranch posted today the three charities meet and greet for. Yeah, Blue Devil 007. I haven't watched this video. I, I woke up today. I went to Fort Worth, dropped my family off at my in-laws, went to Chucky's. We pulled the rear bumper off my green truck, went back, picked up my family, came back here. And it was like 7.30 when I got back, so I started this. I haven't had time to watch any YouTubes. Um. Yeah, so I, I need to find an instructor, I guess, around the Fort Worth area. And um, I'll just have to cold call some places and, and figure out, you know, what the process is. And if I knew somebody with a plane, that'd be great, but I don't know anybody with a plane. Twenty-two. I mean, you can do it. You can find out if you want to. Um, I'm, I'm perfectly capable of. You know, I can. I'll find somebody in Fort Worth that does it. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I just didn't know if uh, uh, you guys knew anybody. Todd Johnson, Steve, you're my hero. Well, thanks, buddy. <laughs> um. Blue Devil, slow day. So, oh yeah, I guess uh, uh, to go back to the uh, 20 hours is for a sport pilot license. What's the difference between sport pilot's license and private pilot license? Is like private pilot, you just fly normal and sport, you get to like do some crazy stuff. David Vibrelic, uh, or uh, Rablik, sorry, I'm going to say your name wrong so bad. I was going to call you David from now on. Uh, there's, a, there's an airport in Stephenville. I need to just go ask him. So yeah, I'll go. Uh, I'll ask around, and you know, that's something I I want to do. <laughs> Moose four two seven. Hey, is that four twenty seven like the engine four twenty seven? Says hey, he fixed it. He super chatted fourteen ninety nine, which just says an A next to it. I don't know what that A is for. Fourteen ninety nine. Um, let's see. What else is, uh, Google is your friend. Yeah, that's always helpful. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the future projects. I have a whole bunch of future projects I want to do. Like, I'll eventually I'll get to like Chucky is now where he's got, you know, 15 different projects, all tractors and engines that need to be rebuilt and everything. But Got to wait till the YouTubes pan out or I get a, uh, I have two sponsors on a channel right now, two paid sponsors. I have another uh, free, uh, uh, paid free sponsor that just popped up. Basically, they send me a product and I use the product in the videos. And then uh, that's the sponsorship. It's a company, CRC, chemical company, um, which I like CRC products. They make brake clean and all kinds of different spray can chemicals and stuff. And then when I'm at a store and I see CRC stuff, and I see other brands I always reach for the CRC stuff. So it works out great because they wanted their product seen in the video and I want to use the product. So um, until I get some monthly sponsors, sponsorships or some other sponsorships. Um, yeah, Princess Crazy Feather 3.0, we're still live. Uh, when is the next video on the Galloway engine? I'm going to uh, I'm going to some engine show in Kansas, Oklahoma this summer, RC pilot. I don't know. Next time I get out there, Justin's got a car that I'm gonna um, I'm gonna take the car from him, a little Hyundai Tipper on, um, get it going and get it kind of fixed up, and hopefully uh, get it street legal and everything. Because my green truck, <clears throat> driving it, so from my house to Chucky's and back is 120 miles. My green truck averages seven and a half miles per gallon. So going to Chucky's house twice a week costs me a tank of fuel that's about ninety dollars. Um, you know, a little less, $85, $88. So it's $100. Well, Justin is twice the, is far away. So to go out to Justin's and back, you know, it's $90 every trip to go out there and back. So I have to factor that in the budget. Now, it's not a, you know, a ton of money or anything, but every little bit adds up. So I was talking to Justin about it, complaining about it, and I was thinking about buying a motorcycle, and I was going to use the money from my Utopia house sale to buy a motorcycle, but that fell through. So now I don't get to uh, by the uh, the motorcycle or project or anything. So Justin was like, hey, man, I got this Hyundai Tipper on you can drive. Um, it gets like 25, 30 miles per gallon. I was like, well, heck yeah. So hopefully I'm going to get that car next week, get it up and running and get it street legal, and I'll start using it 
and then uh, I can have a schedule where I go out to Chucky's. Uh, maybe one week I go to Chucky's two or three days, and then another week I go out to Justin's two or three days. But I think I'm at the point now where I, I need to go around Stephenville and find at least one or two customers to service, um, and not that kind of service. I do some mechanic work for. So, um, uh, so I've got some other some alternative income coming in. Daniel, burn your house down. Possum will be gone. Man, don't worry about possums. Possums are awesome, dude. I just found out there's a possum in my attic. You guys know any tricks to get it out? Daniel Lambert. Not a trick to get it out, but just get you some leather gloves on. And it sounds crazy, but you can go up there with that possum. They'll play dead. They'll just lay down, grab them by the tail, hold them upside down, and shake them. And they'll, they'll lay straight down. And then every time they kind of go up to like, they start trying to curl up their body to like grab, you know, get it by your hand. If you just don't smack them hard, but if you kind of, you know, hit them like that, they'll, they'll play dead. They're not that big of a problem. And they actually eat a, they, their primary diet is like insect and ticks. They eat ticks out of the yard. Um, they're, they're crappy looking and people, you know, they get a bad rap because um, uh, people think they're like scavengers and they're nasty. Um, raccoons are much nastier than um, uh, possums ever are. I mean, they, they're, they're a lot of, uh, you know, they do a lot of good. They're just ugly. That's why people don't like them. If you actually look at my YouTube channel, um, I have a video uh, uh, picking up a baby possum. You know, I've got it in my hand. It's an old video. Um, see, I'll find it here. Maybe I'll put a link up to it. Uh, we had possums at my house in Benbrook. And I just grab them by the, you know, the tail and just you know throw them over the fence kind of deal. They're not as big a nuisance as people make them out to be. It's really sad that people like people will get them and they'll kill them. They come up with all kinds of crazy stuff that like oh well you know they do this and this and this, you know. And it's just um, I don't know. They're they're you know I'd rather deal with possums and a bunch of stupid insects around the place. Here, I'll post a, the link that I just posted on the, the comments is to a video I did where I'm holding a little baby possum. Uh, but whatever you do, Daniel, like, yeah, don't go up in your attic and kill a, kill a thing. Um, uh, they'll eat cat food. So if you, you want to bait them, you can set a trap up there, put some cat food in it, like some wet cat food. D new and the possum stew with a fat back. Man, possum meat's not that good. I've, I've eaten it. Um, yeah, a possum is that it sounds, you know, I, I've always wanted, like I've had an eclectic taste for animals. I've always wanted to have a pet possum <laughs> and a pet raccoon. <laughs> uh, and the other deal about possum, possum raccoons having rabies, the, the likelihood of a possum or a raccoon having rabies that's around your house is pretty small. Um, there's not that many cases, you know, report of actual, like, uh, confirmed cases of rabies in the U.S. Um, I don't know where you're at, but uh, rabies is pretty freaking rare. And a lot of times you'll know it. I mean, they'll, they'll be acting pretty strange. Like a pot, you know, possums won't run at you. They're not going to, they're not aggressive animals. They'll sit there and go, you know, kind of like that. But they won't run towards you. If they have rabies, they'll be running into stuff and they'll be running at you and stuff. And, um, they don't last very long with rabies, but anyway, that's uh, completely different. <clears throat> Aurora Cummins, possums don't carry rabies. I don't know if there's ever been a reported case of. Yeah, Tommy6410 says, true enough, everyone is mechanic now at the internet. Yep. Yeah, Daniel, just uh, the, the one thing is uh, do get you some, like, welding gloves, some thick gloves on, because if they do bite your hand, I mean, they can draw blood. And that's, you definitely don't want it, but they, their bite's not real real hard. Like, they don't have enough to, like, take a chunk out of you. Um, they basically have the ability to kind of, like, bite you like a cat would, just a little less. David said they used a diesel engine in airplanes. Uh, uh, now you know. Yeah, they did. They actually had a diesel in like the 1930s that had rotating cylinder walls. I remember reading about that one. Uh, 
Pepper Tree Ridge Turkey video upload. I think, um, like I said, I don't know what the grand total is for tonight, but I think we've hit the thousand dollar mark um, for the charity. Um, uh, to reiterate that, April 14th is the Demolition Ranch meet and greet. I've got bought a ticket for it. I'll be heading there. Whatever the amount of money from the, the first time we came up with this deal till April 13th on that live stream, I get is what I'm going to take a check down there to them for. Um, Delumina says, get more coffee. You in for some overtime? Um, so anyway, that's the meet and greet with the off the ranch. I'm going to take that money down there. Now, the, the video, I'm not going to do it on live stream because honestly, I don't get enough views on a live stream to do it. I'm going to do a video just with Good Land. His niece is a makeup artist. Or, uh, she has a makeup channel, a makeup vlog. She's going to do the, the lipstick. We'll do a video, um, uh, put the lipstick on. I don't know. We'll, we'll make it funny. We'll make it good. I mean, um, so it'll, uh, <laughs> that's how the lipstick challenge will go. There's been some other things added to it. Like, will you put a dress on for X amount? Will you do this for X amount? Um, I'm all for making myself look like an idiot. I don't know what else to do other than uh, uh, somebody said like the dress to uh, wear it to the meet and greet. I'm not going to wear a dress to the meet and greet. Somebody like I didn't come up with that. It was somebody in Justin's video, 10,000 bucks for a, uh, to it. I don't expect that to happen. I'm not asking for that. <clears throat> Tim Miller said, do you have your lipstick and dress ready? Um, <laughs> Uh, my wife's going to pick out the lipstick. We'll buy some when we're at Walmart. Uh, she doesn't have the right shade of red, I guess. And, um, or she just has lip gloss. She doesn't have lipstick. And the, uh, the dress, I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember what the deal was. Um, I got an earache. Listen, listening to myself talk too long. Montani, um, forgot what her name was. Let's see if I can get back there. I'll I'll post it up. The history, where was it? Dang it! History. Copy. All right, I'm going to put a link up right now. This is the girl that's going to do the lipstick. Yeah, Miss Mia, or Maya, or I don't know how you say that name. Maya, I guess. Um, she's going to do the lipstick. And like I said, Justin and I are going to do a video. We'll put it on, and uh, we'll figure out how, how to make it interesting and funny. <clears throat> um the, the dress deal, I know some of you guys have done the, uh, made comments about the dress. The $10,000 ain't going to happen in, in 13 days. I mean, there's just no way uh, they're going to get that much. Uh, I'm not interested in going to the meet and greet and address. So that's why the, 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 the threshold is set so high. So, um, <laughs> let's see who all's on here. Oh, that just tells me who, um, who the participants are. Curious that Tater Salad never made it back. He didn't make it back to the last one, too. I think he probably he might have overspent a little bit. Um, another deal, guys, don't ever super chat any money. Don't ever donate any money to the channel if you can't afford it. Whatever you donate to the channel, make sure it makes absolutely no difference to your lifestyle or anything. I don't ever, you know, I really don't ever want to come up to, you know, uh, learning that you know somebody has hard times because they got in the uh, uh, in a bind or something over that. Well, uh, how long are we going here? Oh, we've been over. We started at eight, so we about an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, do you guys have any particular topics that you want to talk about before we end the live stream? If not, I'm going to end it pretty soon. Uh, probably at 10, 10, unless you guys have something particular you want to ask or want to talk about. Um, we got all the, the super chats came in. I don't know how many was, you know, total on here. 
live chat all messages do a little top chat some messages such as potential spam may not be visible so I think uh, those of you that are patrons, I'm going to do the Ipix Plier review tomorrow. Hopefully get the video up tomorrow too. And it's supposed to be a video for uh, March and I haven't, you know, I, I moved and other stuff. So it kind of put me behind on stuff. S S M L Q T Y P R T sweet looking woman. Yeah, she's a cute girl. You know, I mean, she's a, uh, I don't know how old she is. I think she's 18, 19 or something like that. But yeah, she's, she's pretty. She's a young girl. So I can't, uh, I was tasting cars. Oh, Moose 427. Did you ever say that that was actually a, um, uh, 427 engine. Zach Haymaker to 73 Power Stroke rebuilt injectors. If I yeah, I get rebuilt injectors all the time. I get them from a place and uh, I think in Illinois it's called Rosewood Diesel. They have a couple of different tiers of engine or, or injector rebuilds. They have like a, a basic, um, which is a $500. You send them your 73 your 60 injectors. They rebuild them for $500. They have a premium for like 1,300 bucks where they go through and they replace all the nozzles and everything. And then they have like the performance, which is like sixteen eight to eighteen hundred dollars or something like that, which is a pretty good deal. And I've had really good luck with all of their injectors. Um, I've had I think four or five sets of them that I put in stuff, and I've only had an issue with one injector, and I sent it back, and they overnighted me a new one. So um, I haven't personally rebuilt injectors. I'm not real interested in doing it. You can um, uh, pull, you know, you can pull them apart and clean out the nozzles yourself if you want to. I know it's not that big of a deal, but generally, by 200,000 miles, any diesel injector is about like 20% of its life. That's why on like the 7.3s and 6.0s, um, a 7.3 with the uh, old injectors, it'll hard, it'll have, be hard to start. Um, you have to rely on the glow plugs a lot, and it's very, very clacky. You know, like a clack, 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 clack. You get new uh, rebuilt injectors, and it's a lot quieter, and the engine's actually how it's supposed to sound. You get a lot of these idiots that hear these real loud, clacky-ass 7.3s, and they're like, oh, man, that thing's running so good. Listen to it. Clack, 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 clack. I'm like, oh, it's terrible. Um, uh, another big thing with 7.3s, and this is a lot of people make this mistake, man. They, they won't start. You know, like It has a hard hard time starting, and I got to you know, you know uh, do the glove plugs two or three times, and they're like, oh, man, the glove plugs. A 7.3 with good injectors and a good engine? That thing will start with no glow plugs hooked up at all, no glow, you know, all them disconnected. It'll start right up in 40 degree weather. I mean, just nye, 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 and it'll fire right up and be fine. Um, people don't understand that it's because your injectors are running at like 20% or 30% of their, their capacity. You know, they're not atomizing the fuel very well. They're just running instead of atomizing, like instead of going out like kind of like a fog spray, they're coming out in a little bit of a droplets. So your engine has to get hot in order for the diesel to ignite because that's what your you know your glow plugs are doing. I fixed I don't know how many diesels people have put glow plugs in, glow plugs relay relays, and they're like, oh man, it's a great engine, runs top notch, injectors are fine, and gotta shoot a little ether in there, you know, it's just terrible advice. And my face started itching all of a sudden, I guess I'm getting nervous. Old school repair shots working on a big cam Cummins and can't get it to smooth out. It runs really rough. Have you uh, ran through the injectors? Have you had them tested? Check your fuel pressure too, your lift pump. Blue Devil, have a good night, sir. Uh, best way to get an old engine clean, truck or tractor pressure wash. Yeah, Montani, uh, uh, pressure wash, the outside, some kind of industrial degreaser. When I'm doing an engine rebuild, I usually have it, uh, I'll have it dipped and I'll have them shot blasted on the outside, um, shot peened. Pepper Tree Ridge, got to do some videos on my Mopars. Man, I'm a Mopar fanatic, dude. I just don't own any. Tim Millard, no, I don't have any new tools, but toolbox, man. I've, I've, since I moved to Stephenville, uh, my, the amount of money that I was making versus now has significantly less. It's about a third. I'm um, just trying to wake, you know, 
get paid off of YouTube. So I haven't been able to buy any like, you know, cool new tools or anything. RC pilot. Chucky's about to, he's looking for a round bailer right now. I think he's done uh, jacking my square bells. Uh, Prep Brothers Homestead. How can you check the 6.5 turbo diesel injectors? Um, you have to go to an injection shop. I forget if those are mechanical poppets or not, if they're the uh, uh, common rails, but take it to an injection shop. Even like uh, uh, the stuff that you can pop at the house, I mean, they make a little tool, you know, like a little bench tester that you can get a little hand crank on it and you hook the injector up to it. You can buy that, hook your injector to it and see uh, and, and supply it and, and see the uh, how much it, it sprays out the end. But really what you want to do is you want it to spray into a graduated cylinder. And so you can see how many cc's of fuel it sprays but then like one second and see if they're all the same and, and know what the specs are tim miller what is a good uh, cleaner for injectors do you use bg makes a pretty decent cleaner um, i'm not a big fan of trying to run fuel system cleaner through an engine um I don't think like the, the fuel injectors you dump in the tank and everything, like the cleaner and stuff, I don't think they work that great. By the time you have a problem, your injectors, that the stuff you have in your tank's not going to help. How hard is it to convert 76 to 12 volt and restoring a JD 420? Jeff Scott's not that hard. New battery, starter, coil, and uh, lights. There's plenty of YouTube videos about it. Uh, old school repair shop, new injectors, new pump. Still running rough. Uh, do you have the ability to do a um, – uh, I'll check your channel out, and I'll look for it. Do you have the ability to do a uh, compression test? Yeah, Beards in Review. I need to check out your channel for the itchy beard. I do. do um, I need to keep using product in it, man. I keep forgetting to, to put oils and stuff in it. I get lazy. Uh, let's see. I need chocolate. You know, I'm not a fan. Okay. I don't think it's necessary. I think it would be. You're up there. Let's see. Videos. This. See if this is it. Let's see the video I'm looking for here. Not okay, guys. I, I, you guys have heard me talk about um, beards in review. Um, it's a uh, Chris is a he's a, a family member. He's not a direct family member of mine, but he's a close friend of mine. He has a channel called Beards in Review. So, I, so I'm posting this link. I want you guys to go watch this video. He shot the video, edited it, put it up. Um, Chris makes some fantastic quality stuff. If you guys haven't seen it, you need to check it out. Um, go over to his channel. At least watch this video and tell me how amazing the, the editing and the, the, the video quality is on this video. It's freaking uh, – uh, eventually, I mean, the, the guy's YouTube channel is going to be big, and that's all he's going to do for a living his YouTube channel, but he makes fantastic freaking videos. But check it out. I just put the link up there. You see my name, Stephen Cox of the Crown, because I'm the king, I guess. Check out that uh, that video clip. If you click on it on your computer, then it'll pull it up in a new tab, and then you can save it till the uh, the live stream's done. Or just go over there now. Um, yeah, Pepper Tree Ridge. You need to fix that lack of Mopars, dude. I had I had one. I, I want to buy so bad, but I just I can't do it right now. Um, see if I can find it. On the Craigslist here, we'll come over here. We'll do uh, blah blah blah, fifteen hundred. I want to show you guys this truck. I'll put the um, uh, the screen share on. So this is a truck that I I wanted to buy. I was I was planning on buying this. This is like the actual style truck that i wanted to get and everything it does not come with the fire you know, tank in the back but it was a fire truck body's extremely clean it's got a 318 in it you know they've got the original grill and stuff um 
Engine doesn't look too bad. Now, the interior picture is a little squirrely. Uh, I don't know what this is because you see this interior picture, and it's different. So there's that one, that one, and then you come down here, and that's it's a different truck. I don't know what this is out of, but this is not the same truck. So they got two pictures from a different truck, and I don't even think that's a Dodge. I think it's like a, a Chevy or something. But anyway, this is the truck that I was looking at. I was like, man, a one-time 4x4. This would make an awesome project truck. I can rebuild a 360 um, and do like a, a, a 408 stroker, 360, some heads and stuff, and then a big lopey cam. And it'd be a pretty cool project, but I'm just going to have to pass on it for now. Pepper Tree Bridge says you can do a lot better for seventeen hundred. Yeah, I mean I could. I mean I know there's other deals out there, but you know from my from what I've looked at, what I've seen, finding a seventies model four by four one ton uh, is is pretty. It's not very common. Like I haven't seen them that much. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but I really like that truck, man. And I've got a certain way I want to build that truck and everything, but I'll eventually get one. Master Bauer, not too much long, man. I'm, I'm going to, uh, let's say 1020. I'll call it a 1020. Okay. Uh, Bren Melby, how do you flush the hydraulic system? It's hard. Um, if you have a catastrophic failure in it, you basically go through all your, um, uh, the way I do it is I take all the lines off all the cylinders. Um, well, I'll take one line off one cylinder. I, I operate the cylinder to blow all the um, the hydraulic fluid out of the other side of the cylinder. And then I blow the actual line itself out, hook it up to the other side of the cylinder, and then do the same for the other side. Uh, and then you just keep dumping the fluid out. You dump the fluid out at least twice, you know, which is a pain on big equipment because you got 40, 50 gallons in it. They make a machine for you. You can hook a machine up and it'll circle, circulate through, kind of like a fuel polisher. Pup Tree Ridge is granted. I'm in the mid Atlanta coast. Yeah, I mean, there's there's deals around here, you know, where you can get a truck for a thousand, fifteen hundred. The only deal on that Dodge that I saw that's different, because I, I see Dodges like that all the time, you know, need work, need an engine. One, that one runs and starts. It didn't, they said it needs a fuel tank. It took fuel tank out for some reason. Run, starts, drives, moves, and everything. One ton, four by four, the clean body, not all rusted out for 1900 It's been on Craigslist for several months. I'm sure I could probably get it for $1,700, you know, $1,500, but I don't have the extra $1,500 to, to throw down on it, so... Wexford call, Wexford Diesel. Got about four minutes left in the live stream. So if you guys want to ask anything particular, now's the time. I'm getting tired and I'm running out of my voice. John Tompkins, uh, do you know what he shot the video with? Very nice picture. I know, but Beards in Review, we will, he'll post it up. And if you like that quality of his video, man, make sure you subscribe to his channel. Um, I said he makes great videos. And I know it's a kind of a different genre as far as, you know, my mechanic videos and stuff. But I mean, a lot of you guys, I mean, you have beards. And uh, uh, I don't know if you guys noticed through this live stream how I keep doing this constantly. It's because, I mean, he's recommended products for me to do. Um, but I just, I, I, I'm lazy. <laughs> Tyler, tow truck driver. I just use the Google um, uh, Google Hangouts for the live stream, and I'm using a uh, the Microsoft Live 3000, the Live Touch 3000 webcam. It's not like the quality of the webcam works pretty good. I've got to use the OBS software to try to get the bit rate up higher. So what you guys see is not that great quality, but it's okay. But it's just not not as good as it could be.
Uh, Keegan Blanchard, I wear Red Wings. Um, I have never done their lager boots. Red Wings are what my slip-ons are right now. Jacob Wheeler, how do you fix reserve or reverse and automatic transmission? Usually, if you lose a reverse, it's because you got a pressure problem. Time to pull the train. David G. Hi, Steve. What's up, David? David, you're late, man. We're about to about to close it down in two minutes. So Rex Stahl says, I owe you a t-shirt still. What size you need? Large, brother. I've been losing weight and getting in shape, so now the uh, the tighter shirts look better on me so I can wear a large again. Uh, Brant Hilverta, most common repairs that you do. For a heavy equipment, it's leaks. For diesels, it's usually... Um, um, usually fuel related stuff and on like seven threes and fours, it's usually high pressure oil. Rex Stahl, lost lab. Hey, I went from, uh, in end of November, I weighed 248 pounds. I'm 218 pounds right now. And I've been working out uh, three days a week. Um, I've been working out three weeks in a row and I'll take off the fourth week and then I'll be back to it. Um, this week is a little scattered. I've worked out one day, and then yesterday I worked out in the morning, and I went up there last night and worked out last night. But I've been getting in better shape. Uh, let's see. i got one minute left before I call it. So what's the secret to weight loss? Don't eat anything with any sugar in it. Intermittent fast. Start eating around 12 to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Stop eating around 5 or 6. That's it. Don't eat anything special. Don't need to do anything. Don't eat anything with any sugar in it and have your eating window between 12 and 5. Eat whatever the hell you want to between 12 and 5 that doesn't have sugar and you'll be fine. Well, we're at 1020, guys. That's it for the Friday night, 50 night for 50 minute Friday. Remember, it's at least 50 minutes. That's what it's supposed to be. People call me out on that all the time, but at least 50 minutes so that's it um we'll do the next uh friday next next friday live stream we hit the thousand dollars so the lipstick challenge is a complete success i will do a video with justin good at land and his niece she's going to do the lipstick for us we're going to make a video about it i'll put it up on my channel it'll probably drop on the 14th of uh, uh, april um Oh, uh, if the money, any any money that goes past this, so like the next live stream, I'm, I'm going up until the 13th. At the 13th, whatever I made up to the 13th, that's the, that's how much we're going to donate to it, um, to the charities and everything. So we still have a couple more uh, live streams to do. But that's it. Um, I appreciate David G. And the last, uh, you know, last in for the win, the $2 super chat. Thank you, brother. What is your favorite music genre and artist? My favorite genre right now is country and my favorite music artist, I don't really have a favorite artist per se. I have a lot of different favorite artists that I like. Um, I like, um, uh, what's his name? Shoot. Can't think of it now. It's on Pandora. Um, can't think of his name. What is it? I listen to John Party a lot, Dwight Yoakam, Sturgill Simpson. Sturgill Simpson is probably one of my favorites. Him and uh, Pink Floyd. That's how, <laughs> how wide of a range it goes. But all right, guys, that's it. I'm going to shut it down. Thanks for watching. And it's a little late, but you can get out and pick something if you want to.